Welcome back to the Rogue Wave Podcast. We do this every week. Hassan's Rogue Rage brought to you by Hassan Godwin. Hassan, what do you got? Yay, me. I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, do you think that we are going to suffer franchise fatigue? It was a, um, it was a- pertaining to uh, comic book movies, uh, the, the MCU, the DCEU, the, the now defunct um, uh, Fox uh, X Men <laughs> franchise. <laughs> like, what do you do? You think that we're uh, years we're ago come into superhero fatigue? Years ago, I wondered that exact thing, and my answer now because so much time has passed, is no. You don't I think, think? I think Marvel has done it in such a way that it is a self-feeding machine. Mm. That it is net now, and it's become so ingrained. And you talk to any Joe on the street, right? Any, anybody, man or woman, um, about what they're watching and what they're into. Like Everyone's like, I love those Marvel movies. I love those Marvel movies. So they don't even see it as like... Yeah, I, hear, I hear a little a little pushback every now and then from people who are surprisingly not into the marvel movies which which kind of which kind of weirds me out a little bit because mm-hmm. there are no there's there is no one kind of marvel movie there is a there's a quite a variety yeah of them so if you hate all the marvel movies in general then it's probably i would accuse you i don't know if this is true or not but i would accuse you of being a contrarian right um but um my point is that there are so many people now talking about or, or warning about like franchise fatigue with right. uh, mostly with the MCU, but also with the DC. Well, the DCU is, is going to is, is doing its best to burn itself out regardless <laughs> yeah. of what anybody else thinks. Um, and, and I find it a phenomenon. It's a strange phenomenon to get something to like what you've gotten and to like it so much that you're kind of betting on it falling apart you know yeah it's like it's like the idea of you know having getting a great salad right and you're like man this this is gonna go real bad in the (laughs) the fridge in like two days it's like it's like you're banking (laughs) on it man like this is one of the crispest one most wonderful salads i've ever had yes and it and very shortly it will be brown and all curled up and i won't be able to eat it it's the strangest phenomenon that i've ever seen and i've seen people do like like vlog and op-ed after op-ed after op-ed after yeah. op-ed about like just just first it's the you know wandavision can wandavision can can right disney plus live up to the cinematic uh, exploits of the mcu right right and then you know like oh, they want to they launch into wandavision can wandavision hold us hold our attention after after a year of drought of you know entertainment movies uh, you know during mm-hmm. the, the time of covid or whatever and then i don't know two three maybe about week three in wandavision the, the dynamic of the discussion changed all of a sudden and everyone's like, whoa, you know, WandaVision doing some some amazing stuff. MCU's done right. it again. My God, they're, they're keeping us. They're keeping us enthralled. Can you believe that we're this into uh, a story about a person who is so obsessed with sitcoms that they've literally, you know, enslaved an entire small town yeah. and forced them all to live. I love Lucy. And so, like, this is a good, this is a collective good. Everyone's sort of enjoying it. Everybody is in, teed up and, and mm-hmm. entertained. And we're not talking about terrible things. But it, there's a lot of terrible things, have had, which I will not list, but have happened in the last, uh, in the last year and a half. I, in I the last good. few months. Huh? I heard good. Yeah. They're yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, I'm sure they were good for you. I mean, you hit your head that one time. So everything's yeah. been good since that. I was Jared but, Leto in the desert. We're we're talking about freaking comic books. We're talking about comic yeah. book movies and TV shows. We have this device that you, we, we have this uh, the, uh, delivery service, the streaming service that's going to deliver us mm-hmm. entertainment straight into our houses. We don't even have to go anywhere. We don't have to, we don't have to have a family car. We don't have to pack everybody in and go to the movie theaters. It's all coming to us, right? At the end of this month, we're going to get a Godzilla movie. We're going to get this Godzilla Beating the crap out of King Kong, mm-hmm. which is the way it should be, as opposed to King Kong beating the you know, don't don't give it away for the people. Don't don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. So my fascination is why people are constantly trying to wreck it mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah. And it seems like a compulsion to me. It seems like people are are com- compelled 
to be the first to be there when it all falls apart. Do you want and, the existential answer? Do you have an answer or do you do. have, is it, is it a whimsy kind of thing? No, is I have it, an existential. Gonna, I have two You answers. have an existential answer. Okay. Two What's versions. your existential? One is the existential and then one is a, a more superficial answer. Uh, okay. The existential answer is that we are existential creatures and we are obsessed with our own existential. We are we are obsessed with our ah. with our eventual own demise. You were talking about death. We are equating the the death of our favorite we are, entertainment. Yes, with, I'm equating that own... that deep down within us, we are always looking ahead to when this is all going to end for us Aww. individually or us as a collective, and therefore we are projecting that onto anything that's good in our lives anything that's good in our lives that's a fascinating will... take <laughs> didn't expect that did you um no, i didn't expect it from you you know <laughs> we are always you're, looking you're... at this is this is <laughs> this is what the fun of being second chair is um uh, uh. that's the that's the existential take the superficial take is uh kings of leon just came out with a new record it's awesome it's an awesome record um go check it out i didn't even know they were still together I'm I sent you. I sent. I sent it to you. I sent. The, I sent the article to you. Um, yes, they okay. have some of the songs they're doing stuck in my head for days. Couldn't get it out. Not in a bad way. I wasn't like, damn it, that song stuck in my head. I kept waking up being, I want to listen to that song. Damn and you, it, Kings I, of Leon. Damn you. <laughs> I've listened to enough music though in my life to know that at some point that feeling is going to end, uh, and so it is. The, this trend of superhero films, which has now become more of an institution, more of a staple. Look, unless you're 12 years old or 10 years old or seven years old, where this is your first roller coaster ride with this kind of thing, you know, at some point, you know, you're not going to get your, your 90s comics. You're not going to get your 90s hip hop. You're not going to get your 90s alternative. Uh, these are all things that I love and I grew up with. Um, it's not something that is just an automatic it's going to always evolve. It's always going to end. You've, you've seen the movie. You know the movie. Well, so. let me, wait, hold on. But in keeping with what you just said, let me ask mm -hmm. you this question. When you were listening to Kings of Leon. Yes. Were you saying to yourself that while listening to, man, eventually I'm going to hate this album. This no. album's going to suck eventually. No, but I, I was walking my dog. And I was listening. And, and the song that had been stuck in my head was back in my head. And, the, and, and it was like, man, compelling me. I can't wait to go listen to this song again because it really it is. It, it, it was the right song for the right moment at this point in my life. And I thought, man, it's going to suck when this is no longer that feeling and I'm going to move on to the next thing. Yeah, but a lamenting something like if you're at a party and you're going to be and, and you're saying, man, it's going to suck when we all leave. Man, we're having such a great time. It's going to suck when this party. Is. That's not that's not so bad. That's not bad. That's not the equivalent of that. The equivalent of what I'm talking about is like. It's like, man, eventually Janine's going to die and she's never going to do these parties again. You know, like that's <laughs> yes. what I'm talking about. Yes. Like it, eventually this is all going to when is this going to happen? When is what when is this thing that is fulfilling us going to stop fulfilling us? Yes. You know, and then what are we going to do? And I want to be the first to predict that it that it is happening, that the end times are near, that we are. It's the guy walking around the street with the sign. The end is near. Yes. Right. But everybody wants to do that. That's like our entire industry yes. is to constantly posit. Yes. When is this all going to fall apart? Yes. It's the most ridiculous thing. And I, I, I don't know why the hysteria is there. I don't know why we do that to ourselves. Like, it seems to me that we're not able to enjoy what we have. We just we all oh, we just have to we have to want it to be crushed. Which one reason. of my answers best best suits your or, or comes as close to what you think is, is the reason. Which one of your answers of the existential crisis of we or are all worried about? We're all worried about dying. Get stuck in my head, and eventually I, they don't. I, I think it's I think it's a a combination of the the superficial mm -hmm. and and also the the the, the ego mm -hmm. of wanting to be the first to to predict the superficial. Yeah. The death thing is, I got I to gotta give that a little more. <laughs> you, I got to let that cook a little I more. I see how uncomfortable you are on that show. You're like, he just made a point that I, that not only do I agree with, but I think was friggin' deep. I don't know. If, I, I, <laughs> I think it's, a, I think it's a, a disturbingly deep point that you made. I will give you that, but I don't know if I agree with it. I have to think right. about okay, it. Okay, but you acknowledge the deepness it's of not, it. It's not bothering me because I agree with it. I, I it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's unusually deep from you, you know, like it's. It is, so 
I got to wonder who's it's a process feeding you. That. Who's feeding you those answers? That's what I'm wondering, basically. Yes. I think your right. wife is slipping you notes right there while, while off camera. <laughs> Mention death. <laughs> Always gets him. It gets them every time. Mention death. He'll be cowed. He won't be able to say a word. You'll win. This has been Sons Rogue Rage of the Week. We do it every week. All the yeah, rage I, wasn't, the I wasn't mad this time. It was a question. No, no. So sometimes the rage is to get answers. That's what this the is rage as deep is. As, I think, yeah, I think it's as deep as your rage has gotten, which is good. Or, or, or your rage has, has ignited a deepness in me that we didn't know. Oh, God. All right. End the segment. Now you've ruined it. Let's get out when of here. When we come back. We welcome Britt and Diane Sellers to the show. They are the head of Scoffer Studios. Uh, they got a cool animated film coming out. It's got Tim Curry in it and lots of cool stuff. Uh, we are excited to talk to these rogue creators when we come back. 